All right, now we want to consider the overdamped response of the series RLC. This is the case where alpha is greater than omega n. So let's recall the roots for the series RLC. We have S1 and S2 equal to minus alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared minus omega n squared. Now recall that for the underdamped response, underdamped case, in other words, alpha less than omega n, we wrote square root of alpha squared minus omega n squared as square root of minus 1 times omega n squared minus alpha squared, which was equal to j plus or minus j square root of omega n squared minus alpha squared. And here we replace that uh, square root with what we call the dampened frequency. So we had plus or minus j omega d. Now in this case, where alpha is greater than omega n, we're not going to do that. We're going to keep it in this form. All right, so this is greater than zero. And it's also, it also has a magnitude, or let's consider this here, uh, the magnitude of the square root of alpha squared minus omega n squared is always less than alpha. So although we have a minus alpha plus and minus both, both permutations, nevertheless, S1 and S2 are both always negative. That's important. The other thing we can say is um, if we, let, let's define this. Let's define instead of S1, we'll say S1 minus alpha plus square root of alpha squared minus omega n squared. S2 equal minus alpha minus square root of alpha squared minus omega n squared. And then now let's define alpha 1 as being equal to minus S1. So in other words, alpha minus the square root here. And alpha 2 equal to minus S2. Okay, this will be apparent in a little bit. Here we see that alpha 1 is always greater than 0, and so is alpha 2. But we can say that alpha 2 is also always greater than alpha 1, right, which is greater than 0. So this is for the overdamped case. Okay, so keep that in mind. So here we go. Let's satisfy initial conditions. Consider initial conditions VC0 is equal to 0 and IL0 equal to 0. So we have VC of 0 equal to 0, which is equal to, recall our, here's our complete solution, VC of T is equal to VS plus A, oh, I forgot to write this before yet, A, E to the minus alpha 1T plus B e to the minus alpha 2t. See, that's why I defined alpha 1 as minus s1, because I actually wanted to show the minus sign here. It just makes it more clear that these are negative exponents. And we have showed, in fact, that um, alpha 1 and 2 are both positive. So these are negative exponentials. All right, so now when we evaluate at time 0, we have vs plus a times 1 plus b times 1. And this leads to, uh, we could write, say, b is equal to minus a plus vs. Then we need to consider il at time 0 is 0. That's equal to c dvc dt. So let's evaluate dvc dt to be equal to 0. And what do we have? The derivative of Vs is 0. Then minus alpha 1a times e to the 0 minus alpha 2b times e to the 0 is equal to 0. So therefore, we have minus alpha 1a, might as well make that plus, minus plus alpha 2b is equal to 0, or all right, b 
is equal to minus alpha 1 over alpha 2 times a. Let's see if we plug those or combine those we'll have minus alpha 1 over alpha 2 a is equal to minus a plus vs so we'll have alpha 1 over 2 minus 1 times a is equal to vs which will lead to a being equal to vs times alpha 2 over alpha 1 minus alpha 2 right this is equal to alpha 1 minus alpha 2 over alpha 2 and b is minus alpha 1 over alpha 2 so it will be minus vs alpha 1 over alpha 1 minus alpha 2 so now we can write our complete solution it's vs plus vs alpha 2 over alpha 1 minus alpha 2 e to the minus alpha 1 t minus vs alpha 1 over alpha 1 minus alpha 2 e to the minus alpha 2 t and if we go back and recall that alpha 2 is greater than alpha 1 then the denominator here is negative in both these cases so let's rewrite this just to show the signs explicitly we would have minus vs alpha 2 over alpha 2 minus alpha 1 e to the minus alpha 1 t plus vs alpha 1 over alpha 2 minus alpha 1 e to the minus alpha 2 t this term here is greater than 0 this term here is greater than 0 but in addition because alpha 2 is greater than alpha 1 <clears throat> we can say this term is greater than this term and thus the overall combination of those two uh, is actually negative let's in fact double check the, um, the initial conditions double check here let me write this over again vc of t is equal to vs all right one minus alpha 2 over alpha 2 minus alpha 1 e to the minus alpha 1 t plus alpha 1 over alpha 2 minus alpha 1 e to the minus alpha 2 t and at time equal to 0 we have vs 1 minus the 2 over alpha 2 minus alpha 1 plus alpha 1 over alpha 2 minus alpha 1 and we can rewrite this as 1 minus alpha 1 minus alpha 1 right which of course is equal to 1 this whole thing is equal to 0 so therefore vc of 0 is equal to 0 all right let's go back and just look at the different components that we have here just to be thorough all right i'm going to plot this all right so we have a constant term vs right that's this term then we have the second term starts off at a negative value goes like this and then the third term starts off at a positive but a smaller positive value goes like this